All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Antenna Helper mod, which is being made by form user Lion. And what this glorious little piece of work looks at into the game is a wonderful tool to give you a whole lot more information about the various antennae you may use on your spacecraft. And it even goes so far as to give you some visual information about their range and power power in the tracking station and even when in flight. It's an awesome tool. So let's jump into the vehicle assembly building first and have a gander at what we get here. Now let's uh, go and grab the ion powered space probe that I was looking at with this earlier and just quickly go to the communications tab where normally in the game you just have this little information panel here for information about your antennae, which is useful showing the ranges but it's not the most useful thing ever unless you remember exactly the range of every planet. So that is where this mod comes into play, where we have this little button down here for the antenna helper. We can click it and we get a whole lot more information. So let's just briefly go through uh, everything here. I say briefly, it's probably not gonna be so brief. So the first thing we have is the selected type. Now this is how the satellite is actually gonna function. Is it going to be a direct communication between just the satellite and your uh, tracking station? or is it going to work through relays? Now, if you want to use a relay, your satellite or spacecraft actually has to have a bit more than just one antenna, and it also has to have an antenna that is compatible with relays, which I'm not remembering exactly which ones they are now, but they are these three, this one here, and I'm not 100% about these, but you just have to play around, grab antenna to use, and yeah, so a relay has to have some specific criteria but back to direct here real quick now the next thing we have is the strength to the current target so basically what are you trying to communicate with now by default it'll go to the highest level of your tracking station now we're of course in sandbox mode so that means level three, and it's referred to here as the DSN, the Deep Space Network, and being in Sandbox, it's the Deep Space Network level three, and it shows you the max range of the DSN here. Now we can change that if you are, say, in career mode and you're planning ahead, so maybe you're just at level one of a tracking station, but you're about to go up to level two, you can look at that and plan ahead for a mission, or if you know you wanna connect with a certain ship that's right now in flight, we can go here to select that. If you want to test how it might work with a craft in the editor that you've saved, you go to the editor ships button, or if you actually want to see how it'll connect with certain antenna parts, you can go to the antenna parts button and just set your target by whichever one you please. But again, by default, it just sticks with the tracking station. Now, then after that, we have all the information about our antenna here. So the status showing that we have two antennae that are not compatible with one another, and that the Communitron 8888 is the most powerful one we currently have on this vessel. And it'll show us the max range, the uh, or the power rather, the max range, and then the max range to still maintain 100% connection, which is very important. And then it'll even give you sort of a visualized scale down here where everything in the green is going to be at 100%. And then you'll basically lose 25% as you go down into the different colors with anything beyond red when you're in the map later on being zero. Now we then also have, I think is the most useful tool, the signal strength distance calculator. If we click this, we get this new UI here, which will have the major celestial bodies. It doesn't have all of them, but the primary bodies of the solar system here. And it'll show you the signal strength of this particular spacecraft and what your max will be at it. So uh, at the moon, we're gonna get 100%. At Moho, we'll be at 98. All the way to Elo, where this thing 
Who boy, single max di or minimum distance will be 73% and max distance of its orbit will be 10%. So this is very good to have this calculation showing you both the minimum distance of the orbit and the max distance of the orbit. But what if you have say a planet pack that adds in a new planet that may not be on this list or if you have say another solar system in your game? Well, you can actually type in a distance here and then have it do the math and it'll show you the strength. Now, of course, with that that I typed in, it's 100%. But yes, you can actually type in specific numbers here and calculate it manually, which I very much love having that ability. And the final button we have here in the BAB is the Add Ship to Target list. Now, if you remember from the Pick Target, the editor ships that I mentioned, uh, that is what will be in this list. So if you did want to add, which I already have in here, the ion-powered space probe, we'll delete that one. If we wanted to add this to the list for checking in here as a target, we can just add it by hitting that button. And there it is for us to test with. Now that's everything here in the Vehicle Assembly Building. So let's go to the Tracking Station where we get a lot more visual information rather than numeric. So if we actually, uh, oh boy, scroll out here, we'll again head down here to the antenna helper button and suddenly we are awash in colors. And that is because we currently have, well, this lovely little uh, multiple circles here showing the signal strength by default of uh, the tracking station. With nothing selected here, it's going to be the DSN, your deep space network, and its signal strength of that. Now, if we select on a specific craft, it's going to default to active connections, which basically is going to be any connection that it's on that gets it to your deep space network. And it will change depending on which craft you're currently working with which is handy. Now we can also adjust that stuff over here. Now, like I said, the default is this active connection, but we can also switch it to just the DSN. We can switch it to relays, which for <laughs> this one, the only relay I have out is around, oh, I'm on the relay. <laughs> it's not showing the relay because I currently have the relay selected. But if we say have the ion space probe selected and then hit relays here, we just have this small little circle for the relay I have around the moon. Or we can have selected DSN and relay, and you can see the relay is still visible, but a bit washed out because of, well, the freaking Deep Space Network being the uh, superior long-range communication. And again, it will switch depending on which you have selected here, which is very handy. So you can check out what all you got. And we can also test out any ships in our editor list by going in here and selecting it. Again, so you have that ability to basically test out things before they run. Now let's actually go to the ion-powered space probe that I have around Minmus, and we still get more information in flight in this view. We once again have the antenna helper button, which we can click, and here we get the information about our current signal strength, giving us more information than we have here. Now, of course, we have the percentage here, and by default, which is useful, and we have that same info here, our ion-powered space probe to the deep space network being 100%. But if we have, say, a connection through a relay, we'd actually have multiple buttons here. The first button showing the ion-powered space probe to the relay, and then the strength of the relay to the deep space network. And for these buttons, we can actually click to see more information about that connection. So if we click the ion-powered space probe to DSN, it's basically going to give us the same information that we had back in the vehicle assembly building. We know our max range, distance, signal strength, etc. Now, if we do want to use a relay or if we want to check if our orbit may take us into another relay, what our signal strength will be, we can click the potential relay button and select 
any relay we think we may be connecting to at some point. So for right now, I do have a relay around the moon, and I can click that and get the information about that relay so I know its max range, distance, signal strength, etc. Again, giving you a lot more useful information. And then lastly, if we go into the map view, we have yet again the antenna helper button where we're going to get a similar view to what we had in the tracking station, but we have the added bonus of having the same bit of UI that we had in flight. But we can once more check active connections, DSN, relays, DSNs and relays, or switch to none to just have the defaulted view. And I very much love having this ability. It's so useful now when you're in sandbox mode with how powerful the dsn is it's not the you know most useful thing in this solar system but if you add additional planet packs or even whole new star systems into the game the ability to visualize your connections and see oh no i'm about to go into this other ring over here losing signal strength that is a powerful tool to have and so i think it is a great addition into any version of this game so if you'd like to check it out for yourself you should take a look at the link in the description as per usual but that my friends is going to be it for this episode not really much else we can talk about with it but it is just a wonderful tool so go check it out have fun i hope you have enjoyed this episode today and that you do come back for the next when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod but until that time thank you for watching and as always have a good one